How's it going everybody? Josh KI6NAZ. I'm at the International DX Convention here in Visalia, California at the Flex booth. Michael Walker is going to talk, oh, call sign, ba 3 mw is going to talk to us about the new Maestro. So right off the bat, nice to talk nice with to you on camera. Here. I don't know that we've done a, a camera I don't think so. we've done a face-to-face. -face. No, no, no. So what's, what's going on? What's new? So we have a new Maestro now that we've had two versions before, the Maestro A and the Maestro B. Mm -hmm. uh, really intuitive naming, so you're not confused. I uh, love, my wife will tell you that is her biggest frustration with radio products, is that the numbering system doesn't make any doesn't sense. Doesn't make any sense. So, honey, there you go. And, and uh, it replaces the the B, of course, which we have un been unable to ship for probably close to four years. And <laughs> I'm going to laugh about this, you know. We really do want to ship something. It's not like we're going to sit on it for four years and say, no, you can't have it. But due to a variety of uh, issues that certainly well publicized, uh, we finally got it out the door mm -hmm. uh, earlier this year. A huge back order list as of today, which is mid-April-ish, 2024, about halfway through that order. Mm -hmm. And that list is getting shorter every week. Good. So what's the maestro do? Well, if the uh, well, your crowd won't know because none of them are under over fifty. But uh, I'm they kidding. understand well. Well, I'm, let's see where his joke is going. Let's let's see where he's so going. So, if you with ever this. worked on old Motorola radios and you put them in cars, oh, I you got put tons the of radio Motorola, in the trunk. Yep, and you put the control head in the front. And, and actually, we have ham radios like yeah. that from like the Icom seventy one hundred, sure, and, and whatever. Yeah. This is a control head for RHF radios, the mm -hmm. six thousand series. Uh, it connects to. Uh, how does it get to the radio? Over the internet, or over the LAN, or uh, plug a LAN cable in and plug it into the radio, it just works, or if you're using our smart link tool, which comes with all our radios, you could have your radio in, an, in another house, and half a world away. This is smart enough to, to find it. So, that's a really good point, because a lot of those ones you could do maybe wireless, you know, to a radio if you're in the same location, but you're saying you can connect this to just a LAN connection. Yeah, it's 100% LAN, whether to the radio, which is sitting beside you, like this behind Josh. Just on the network. Or at my house in Toronto. Okay. Which we have over going on behind us. And then that's really one of the strengths of yeah. the Flex Radio is this whole IP-based communication. Mm -hmm. And it's designed from the ground up to do that. It's not an afterthought, which we think is a big deal. I mean, that's basically the entire line of your radios is to be something that is remotable, connectable. You're going to use a computer in some cases to connect to it, or just this, right. right? That's the whole, that's by design. Well, and imagine, you know, I have pictures on presentations where you see a desk and it's full of equipment, right? Yeah. Now, why does it have to be? Well, it doesn't. Right. You, know, you can put the radio under the desk. In uh, Andy's case, who's standing beside the camera, he's got a nice little shack. Clean, Andy's keeping an eye on us. Clean, here. a clean little desk. His radio is on the other side of the wall. Right. Okay. In a in a rack that he and uh, or people have. Uh, I find a fair bit of people, usually in the Midwest, mm -hmm. have uh, their operating station, but all their radio equipment's in a building that's two or three hundred feet away. And that makes sense because then you also get to reduce feed ah. line, you can reduce local interference, you can do all kinds of great stuff. Right. And that. you get rid of half your feed line, yeah. you get more signal in, yeah. so you can hear, you get more signal out. Makes right? sense to me. So today, if I was to do everything all over today, I'd build a, you know, a telephone booth or something small, right at the base of the yeah. tower, run the 220 line to it, and now I only come down to the tower, and if you have a stepper or things like this, it's all doable. Yeah, yeah. I, there was a discussion on Node Red we were having earlier and some remote capable things, and, and this is kind of one of those central items that you could just put a box somewhere, right, the, the radio, and then you use this as kind of your interface for those that like knobs right. and, and buttons, right? Right. Or, I used to be a road warrior in the, in the software support industry. Mm -hmm. I'd throw mine in my suitcase. Oh, yeah. yeah. Perfect. So nothing worse than being stuck in a hotel room. Well, you, you get stuck in a hotel room, and you did bring like a QRP radio. But what are you going to go do out in the in the rain or the cold? You're going to set that up where there's horrible RFI. This is often a better situation, right? It's also made a big change into HF mobile. Aid. Okay. Put the Maestro, like the the truckers or whatever, or, you sure. know, people with a big real estate, will put it on their dash. Mm -hmm. They'll, you know, Wi-Fi or uh, cellular data is really inexpensive today. They'll connect to their home station mm -hmm. with the big antennas, and they're on the air, whatever, data's cheap, 
Yeah. And they operate remotely from 100 miles away. Uh, you brought it up. I'll ask the question. How, how much data package would you need to make this? Because you're looking at this, everybody that's probably watching this. I'll get B-roll and show right now for everybody. It's a really great looking screen. How much data is this you need to make this work? Two questions. What we'll do with the data. Okay. You could reduce it to about uh, 250 kilobits. Oh, that's not bad. Uh, just you know, you re this is this is actually just a movie being sent by the radio. Oh. Okay. So when you say, I want more spectrum oh, or wow. less spectrum, okay. the radio sends you more radio. Or so there's no processing. It's not. Do yeah. This is okay. So we use really fast oh. computers called field programmable gate arrays mm -hmm. in the radio. Mm -hmm. And in the old flex days or every other SDR, not to not to not to throw them under the bus. That's not sure. the point. A lot of the processing is done in the computer, so you need like a high-end gaming computer mm -hmm. or whatever. In the flex radio design, my iPhone's more than powerful. This is a 15, but, I, but but 13, 12, 11, 10, yeah, or about there. Certainly, hugely powerful enough because all it has to do is play this movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, feed me some audio, listen to my microphone, and tell when I hit the push to talk. And, and control inputs are nothing on uh, in the bandwidth. So right. Now then, second question, beautiful oh. screen. Right. And the, the display is 8 inch, eight not inch. 7. Okay. I don't, I don't like every other radio. Uh, that was part of our holdup with production. It's one more. Trying to find, yeah, one more <laughs> inch. It's trying to find a quantity of these screens. Oh. Because you don't want to have to redesign it for right. years. Right, right, right. And that happened with with one company, oh yeah, we okay, stopped yeah. making it. Another one, you go to order. Hey, we'd like to order. I'm picking a number of the year five thousand. Uh -huh, oh, we're uh -huh. only going to build twenty five hundred. Right. Okay, start over. You have to requalify. Yeah. This is a. We used to use a tablet because in those versions that was the technology that made sense. Today, this is a display. It's an eight inch screen. It's got an HDMI port, so we can actually feed it to an external monitor now. Oh, cool! I don't think so. That's handy. Mm -hmm. We have a battery pack in here made by um, RRC, yeah. which is you're probably familiar with. You get you can put a battery in here and walk around with this here for ten hours. So that is a specific battery pack. Yeah. I remember it. Well, used to be a battery used, bank. That you yeah, could it used carry, to be USB. like USB. Yeah. So you are using a denser battery chemistry, I'm guessing. Yeah, exactly. Whatever our RRC makes these for uh, ENG cameras, and mm -hmm. it's a pretty common commercial battery. Mm -hmm. And we liked it because it was available, shippable worldwide. Uh, so if you were in Germany, you could buy it locally. If you're in the right. UK. And shipping batteries by mail or any carrier is actually a bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, yes. Or flying with them. Or flying with them. <laughs> that's why this battery is 99.4 uh, watt hours. Right, right at the limit. Right yep. at the 100 watt. Yeah. Uh, the external voltage is 24 volts. Uh, it comes with, the, comes with the power supply. Okay. It'll charge the battery in a hurry. Our oh, CTO, excellent. Steve Hicks, N5AC, goes, I don't want to wait overnight for this battery charge, so they put yeah. a big power supply because it didn't really cost that much more sure. to build it that way. So really well done, and it, it is. It's 10 hours. So Easy. from a, a look and feel, obviously the screen is the thing that catches your eye right. the most, but uh, the, the button and dial layout is pretty much the same, right? Over exactly the, the exactly same. Exactly the same, okay. Buttons. So buttons is a great question. Uh, I, I do this in a presentation, and you can hit pause and go count if you want, but how many buttons do you think are in front of a Yaesu FTDX 5000? Uh, it's, uh, isn't it like uh, close to like 100? It's more than. Is it? Oh my gosh, I don't and know. each button's got two or three levels of shift. A, a, a single click, a, a deep press. Clip, or a deep press yeah, or yeah. hold. And, a, yeah. and it's all written in what, four point font? With different color With font. different color. Yeah. So none of us are getting any younger. <laughs> the lettering is high contrast, black on white. Yeah. The, uh, they're very well laid out. With the help of guys like, when this was designed originally, like there's K9CT who's sitting there right there, was part of that yeah. group. So these are the buttons we use all the time. Volume, filter bandwidth, volume, filter bandwidth. And so they're, the, the, they're the double dial, the where double you got dial. the outer ring and the center ring, which I've always liked those instead of having a click twist. Right. I, I like that better. You could probably figure out what these two do. I think I know that one for this sure. This multifunction knob, if I'm in C, if I'm in sideband, we have mic gain and power. Oh, great. And if I flip to CW, we have still power and CW speed. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So double using. Why would you add another knob? Right. And then all the menus 
uh, to control the radio in the submenu, they're very well uh, categorized by transmit functions, receive functions, mm -hmm. GPS, and other features within the radio. So you can pretty much do everything you want without cracking over in the manual because it's written. You said GPS, so this this has GPS? So the GPS in here is used for a time base for frequency referencing. Okay, okay. That's, that's about all that... Mm -hmm. uh, I have, uh, every time I get on the frequency measurement test, which is fun to do, mm -hmm. I'm easily within a hertz without any special equipment, okay. just measuring a tone frequency. Right. You're just and trying to maintain some kind of close in. Just incredibly tone. stable. Do you need a GPS installed in the radio? For most HF operators, no. For us purists that like to be like spot on to mm -hmm. the, like the microhertz, you can do that. Yeah, or if you're into using it for transverters. Right. Uh, and stuff where you're starting to multiply things, and yeah, it's helpful to have. I guess if you're doing like FT8, you need a certain proximity, but that's going to be on the, the side that uses it. Only FT8 if you're anything above six meters. We wouldn't even worry about it. 58 is not that critical on frequency. Okay. You can add a little bit of drift. Type yeah. Of thing. And you the drift is. Seconds and you only need to hold frequency for the 15 seconds. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it'll then lock on again and again and again and again. But you are likely be pulling time off of the device you were using anyway. Right. So if you're using a smart device or, I mean. Yeah, we don't have a time sync. Right, gotcha. That would be a nice ad, though, if it had an onboard NTP time server, because you could do that. Or a dongle. Or a dongle. Because yeah. they make dongles cheap. So you, let's, let's say we were. Sitting down, we're going to play some radio. Can I plug a mic in? Can I plug so, a key in? What do I do? Um, I turn it around, but it's all plugged in. Yeah. So on the back, you can plug in a CTIA headset, which means it's a like um, I, iPhone headset, the 4 one mm -hmm. inch. Works perfectly. Oh, okay. It's a, uh, radio Sport, our good friend David, Radio Sport makes a great headset like this. Mm -hmm. It's very light. It's a great travel headset. And it'll just plug right in and... He said, I also, because my wife wanted full range drivers in it, so it's great for watching movies. Oh, cool. I used to do it on a train a lot. What's the connector type for this? Uh, it is uh, tip four, ring, ring sleeve. Or? Tip ring ring sleeve. Okay. In, TRRS. In CTIA format. Okay. Now, this is new for ham radio to have this as a primary, so yeah. the, noi the noise is coming a little bit, but I lived it through the 90s when we went from 8 pin round to RJ45. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The world didn't end and it all worked we'll, out. We'll make it. We'll make, we'll make it. it. <laughs> it's a fairly easy to get connector. Sure. Uh, we have the ability to, to plug in a CW key. So that's always the big thing I, I, when we talk about remote. Um, we talk about CW. How do you how do you get the feel? Like, is it Just plug in a key. You plug right in. You can hand send. Okay. And I'm going to go into a bit of detail here. Okay. In remote CW, it's incredibly hard to do. Yes. And yes. if you use, you can look up solutions that include using uh, two uh, wind keyer <laughs> devices, one at each end. Uh huh. Okay. And wind, you know, wind keyer remote is one of them. Mm -hmm. And the techno, the way that that's designed is, I send an A. The wind keyer hears <laughs> Mike send. Da -da. The wind keyer sends the letter A to the radio. The radio sends the A out. Right. Okay, not really hard technology. It's available today. But we're running a character late, one character behind all the time. Because you're running an active buffer. Yeah, and it's got to wait. But it's got to wait. Hey, what character was that? Right. So if it's an E, no big deal. If it's a zero, it's a big deal. Right. Da, da, da. Right. Anyway, and then... Uh, the way we send it is we actually send the, the timing elements that we make in microseconds. Oh, receive 12 microseconds. Send oh. 30 mi or milliseconds. So if you send so like crap. So it's a crap, budget thing. Yeah. If we, yeah. If we send... If you send like crap, it'll send your crap for you. Oh, but it's accurate crap. But it's accurate crap. It, it's, it's, as long as it's accurate, right? And for the, the CW purists, that, you know, where people recognize your fist and whatever, oh, okay. that's important. Okay. So let's say, so key plugged in, works directly in the unit. Um, what if I don't have a key? Uh, but this, I want to do text uh, you can, CW. There's, uh, on the Maestro, it's a little clumsy. You can do pre-canned messages like you can emote. Okay. HF radios. Mm -hmm. If you're using uh, smart SDR 
on a PC. Mm -hmm. We have it's called CWX. You can have an active keyboard. So that's what I'm familiar with. Where my buddy will pull out his phone and he'll start working. Yeah. You know, CW with that. Is there any um, connection between your your phone app or your computer app with the Maestro, or are these completely separate They're, units? So those are the clients. Those are the, those are the parts sure. that the protein units use. You and I. Mm -hmm. And it's just a different client. So yeah. the phone, like my iPhone running Smart SDR for iOS, is, uh, developed by Marcus, DL8 MRE, mm -hmm. is a just a client to talk to the radio. Mm -hmm. This is a client to talk to the radio. If um, Does it have the capability of like a USB keyboard? No. Okay. Maybe, but not yet. Not yet, okay. It's always a big discussion. Uh, we didn't do it in the uh, earlier models because of a couple of things that we were... As a developing team, you're always concerned about uh, could it be an attack vector? Could it not work perfectly? Sure. You know, in theory, yeah, it should work. Right. But if it's not perfect, you can't send it out the door. Sounds like you guys have gotten hurt by Bluetooth devices in the past. We have. <laughs> we're, we said we would turn on Bluetooth. Yeah. Uh, it, but Bluetooth is latent. Even oh, fast yeah. Bluetooth is slow. Yeah. yeah. So that's why we're uh, we haven't turned that on yet. Okay. Uh, anything else new and interesting you want to mention? Because this, I mean, this is, it's beautiful. Uh, your packet DX cluster spots show up on here. Oh, cool. And if you're contesting with N1MM, they come up in different colors. Okay. Oh, white, don't need them. You know, blue, red. And, uh, oh, wow. Okay. And that's if oh. it's got, like, smart link connected to your radio at home? No, if you're using N1MM for a contest and it's connected to your radio. Got it. N1MM will send the DX clusters based on my DX spots I need or not. Or okay. you can just use it for regular DX. Work. Okay, so everybody back home, you tell me <laughs> if I got this right. So my home flex has my home computer connected to it via the network. I take this out and about, and because they've all connected to each other, right, via the internet, you know, or whatever, then it's going to be able to see my N1MM log. No, not in that or, case. Okay, well, it's sorry. not the type of thing you would do, because you wouldn't have N1MM running at home. And then take your maestro out in the world. Okay. But to, but the say, spots, I mean. But, yeah, the but let's cluster. Say, yeah, let's say we're contesting. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're all remote. Yeah, you could make that all work type of thing. Right. You, and there are ways to have this send DX cluster spots just normal days, normal ways, without having run an MOM. You still have to run some software okay. to do it. Uh, we chose not to have the management of the DX cluster in the clients. Mm -hmm. Because we're, it's not the business we're in, right? We could do it, but it probably sure. wouldn't be great right? Uh, or perfect. Mm -hmm. So it's better done with your logging program to send those spots right into the radio. So or you can write your own in Node-RED and have Node-RED do it. Uh, yeah, there you go. So uh, laptop running FT8, I can plug into this and go I, through? Well, you don't have... This is the, the cool stuff now. The star part of your whole network is the radio. Yep. So the radio connects to or the oh, my stuff connects the to the radio. Yeah, yeah. The laptop sitting here connects to the radio. Sure. I work my FT8. Right. Okay. I got so it. So this is yeah. my user interface. Right. My knobs. Makes. This is yeah. my logging. Yeah. But it gets better because we use TCP/IP or a LAN. I could have FT8 running on this laptop. Maybe I'm a ham radio deluxe guy, logging guy, running on this laptop. Mm -hmm. I'm controlling my radio with Maestro, yeah. and they're all beautifully synced together. And it's it's not like it's magic voodoo, it just works. Right, and uh, immediately after you start talking, I'm like, yes, of course, because why would we want to run the computer through the Maestro to the radio just to add more steps to, to slow everything down? That makes perfect it's sense. A unco it's a very common misconception because we've grown up in a world where the computer you know, if you were building a station and it was fairly had a bunch of stuff on it, mm -hmm. the computer was the key part of the integration. You know, you generally couldn't get on the air until you booted the computer. That's right. Now the computer's just a user interface for some cool function. You know, we in your group, we've talked enough about Node yeah. Red. Yeah. That Node Red actually, it connects to the radio and it says, "Hey, you're on 20 meters, 14074." Mm -hmm. Shows up on my Node Red screen. Oh, the maestro just put it in transmit. Radio goes into transmit. Reflected. It goes out in the land. The maestro goes red. Says it's in trans. You get the idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. And no, so it's this. We've gone away from this really old-fashioned tin can and a string RS-232. <laughs> right, 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 right. I like it. Well, um, it looks beautiful. And uh, thanks for taking the time, Mike. Hey, That's thanks, Josh. It. Yeah, we'll post links uh, in the video so you guys can check it out. But of course, flexradio.com www.flexradio.com email us at hams at flexradio.com and uh, 
Yeah, we look forward to chatting with you. All right, thanks. 7-3.